Hello, I'm Jacob and you're watching The Prepper's Bunker Outdoors. Uh, today's video is in the Call to Patriots series. This is a wake-up call. Recently, I did a video about how we are in the golden age of firearms, specifically as assault rifles and battle rifles, uh, namely AR-15s. They are cheaper than they have ever been. They are cheaper than they will ever be. I'll put a link to that video right here. But uh, I have always believed in buy once, cry once. I had n have never considered buying a budget AR. With recent political changes, I've been motivated to do this series and to do exactly that uh, because I want to build three or more identical ARs, which for the sake of this channel, I'm going to build them from different manufacturers to the same specs so that I can tell you who made the best AR for the buck. That's what this all comes down to. Having a, uh, a poor man's arsenal, being able to have a cache, being able to have the same rifle in different places so that in a worst case scenario, if you have to give one up or if you have to give one to a buddy or whatever the case may be, you can do that. Uh, we are starting out with an upper that I got from Brownells on sale for their uh, Labor Day Socialist Day sale. Uh, this is Bear from Bear Creek Arsenal. I'll tell you that all I did to this upper was put this Magpul MOE foregrip on it and uh, this arms number 71 rear sight on it. And uh, so what we're gonna do today, this is gonna be a first impressions video. We're gonna look at uh, the build quality a little bit, uh, take a look at the specs, and then I'm gonna zero it for these iron sights. I have to stress that if nothing goes wrong when I zero the sights, if I have no malfunctions, that does not necessarily mean anything good for the firearm. If it does have a malfunction, that would certainly be bad. So let's take a closer look at this rifle. All right, so this video is about the Bear Creek Arsenal upper. And this is their basic GI M4 upper. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Just real quick, what I'm putting it on is a Tennessee Arms poly lower that I had laying around. It's got a DPMS two-stage trigger that's actually quite nice in it, a Hogue finger groove grip that I'm quite fond of, mil-spec buffer tube, and this, I don't know why this isn't more popular. The Anderson Manufacturing Standard buttstock for their AM15 just looks like a normal buttstock, but it has a QD slot in it. I, this is a $15 buttstock, I don't think that there's any other buttstock on the market that can touch it for 15 bucks. I'm very impressed with that. The only problem is, like most manufacturers, uh, they did not make it anti-rotation because nobody knows anything about slings because nobody cares about slings. But enough of that. We are here to talk about the Bear Creek Arsenal Upper. All right, so this is a 16-inch barrel. Brownells advertised and showed this rifle with a standard A2 birdcage muzzle brake, and instead I got this Chinese looking horse crap joke of a muzzle brake. This thing's freaking pathetic. Uh, but um, I guess you'd call this a SOCOM uh, barrel, 16 inch. This is a one and nine twist, so this is gonna be for your lighter bullets. Uh, I think it prefers 55 to 62 grain, which is primarily what I'll be shooting through it. It did come with the standard polymer bullcrap forend. Um, I just hate it. So I replaced it with the MOE, and I'm so far, first impressions, very fond of it. Delta ring, of course. All right, so let's get into this thing, into the important stuff. Oh yeah, like I mentioned, this is the uh, arms number 71 rear sight. I think I'm going to return this to Brownells. Quick plug. Uh, I'm in no way sponsored by Brownells, but I would love to be. They're the only company that I would be all about being sponsored by. But uh, they do free returns, full warranty on everything that they sell. That's awesome. Now, most of the uppers that I've ever had or seen had a little A forge mark here from the foundry. Um, I don't remember what foundry that is, but most of them have the A there. It probably means they're all made by Arrow. Again, I'm not 100% sure. 
I have never seen this square, so I'm not sure where that comes from. That's kind of anecdotal. Uh, normal charging handle, uh, the way I want it because all the other charging handles are gay. Uh, bolt carrier group, we're going to definitely be talking about that in a second. But uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I haven't mentioned it yet. Um, I'll probably go back and edit it in. But this upper with a Brownells sale code with a lifetime warranty and an MOA guarantee on the barrel, this complete upper with BCG and charging handle was $210 shipped. That doesn't even make sense. That's why I bought it. All right. So we are going to get into the meat of this. Uh, if you are an AR person, you know directly where we're going. If you're not, uh, you need to know is the gas key and the staking on the gas key. You see these uh, little dents here by the bolt? That is the staking. Those exist so that those bolts cannot twist. They need to be deep enough uh, to be effective and I'll be honest, I'm not sure that they are. We'll find out with time, and once I get my armorer's book, uh, if they're not properly staked, I will properly stake them. But if these bolts loosen out and your gas key starts getting loose, uh, your reliability is gone. All right, so a little bit deeper here. Firing pin. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not up to speed on firing pins and what uh, would be the requirement for them. I will say that this one looks pretty chintzy. Um, usually they seem to have a high level of polish. I think that they're typically chrome coated, but they might not be. I could be wrong. But this one looks pretty dingy. It probably just means they'll be a little harder to clean and it won't matter. Or maybe it'll mean that it'll fail. We will see. All right. Into the next thing that matters. The bolt. This is the heart of your rifle. When your rifle fails, not if, when your rifle fails, it will probably be because of this part here. So, carry a spare. Before I get too far ahead of myself, inside this BCG, is not chrome lined. It's gonna be hard to show you, but it would be shiny in there if it was. There's no chrome lining, it is just what it is. Uh, the chrome lining helps uh, make things easier to clean, helps keep things smooth and running well. We'll see if grime really builds up in there quick enough to affect performance uh, between cleanings. This, this rifle, I do intend to run through a tactical response class. It will get exceptionally dirty. So we'll see if that affects it. The bolt also typically is chrome lined down here. This one is not. It says MPI, Magnetic Particle Inspected. I guess anybody could, in theory, uh, laser engrave MPI on anything. Um, but I would like to believe that they are being truthful and this is magnetic particle inspected. And what that means is basically they put this through a machine that can tell if there are any micro fractures or problems with it that you couldn't see with the naked eye, which would, if it passes a magnetic particle inspection, ensure you that the part that you get is heat treated properly and ready to rock and roll. And, uh... To bump it down one step further. Open this old girl up. And you do have not only the extractor spring, but also the elastomer. Uh, when I was in the military, that was like a new cool thing. Now, not so much. I think it's pretty much become standard. Uh, extractor feels nice and sharp. Uh, good to go, but uh, pretty standard. So overall, uh, when it comes to quality, um, what I'm going to be looking for uh, if I have reliability issues is uh, the gas block. Is the gas block properly seated? 
uh, so that we can get enough gas so the gas ports line up and is the hole in the barrel of the proper diameter so that it will be properly gassed and is all of the staking correct that is what we are going to be looking for uh, what do i think about this rifle for 210 dollars shipped i think if you can buy this rifle and clearly you can watch youtube videos since you're seeing me talk right now you can probably get this rifle run the donkey snot out of it fix things as they break or repair things as they break through an education that you could probably obtain on youtube asking people how to fix certain things, which is kind of the point of this whole deal. Uh, we are here for budget patriots. This cotter pin irritates the crap out of me because it's flared out here. See that? And so it never wants to just go in like I want it to. Maybe cotter pins are supposed to be like that in these. I've never seen one that was. They're always much more straight than that. Son of a gun, I got it to go earlier. Uh, but 250 bucks get out there get shooting you've got something if this gun is properly set up and runs reliably it's incredible for 210 bucks shoot it left So you guys just saw me shoot. I shot three rounds. I put a KNS Precision uh, front sight post in here. I'll do a video about that later. I'm a big fan. Um, I haven't touched anything though. And you can see my group here. My group is not good. I'm certainly not bragging. We're at 25 yards. But for that being my first three rounds, aiming at that center dot, uh, I am absolutely pleased so what i'm going to do i'm not going to shoot any more zeroing right now because if i remember right for a 300 yard zero i need to zero at 25 yards and i think i need to hit about three inches low in which case i'd be right on but i'm not going to shoot anymore until i confirm that but uh this isn't a zeroing video uh what i'm going to do now i'm going to shoot a couple rounds at steel try and have a little bit of fun and then when my romeo 5 sig red dot comes in I'll zero that. We'll shoot a little bit more, um, but uh, that'll be another video for another day. Uh, what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna plank a little bit and we're gonna have some fun and I'll give you my final thoughts in an outro. You hold it right where you want to hit, and you hit it. No six o'clock hold or anything like that. Give you a couple rounds. Let's see if the Rockasons can shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot the small targets, you Rockasson. There you go. All right, so uh, we've got it figured out where it's hitting. We're slapping small targets at close range, no problem. I'm really excited to stretch this thing out. Uh, and I am going to confirm the zero on these sights with the irons to get it nuts on because I believe that's important. But for right now, uh, first impressions, I am, I am super stoked on this rifle, 100%. Um, I can't wait to tack get to tactical response, really put this thing through the ringer, and we'll see how it holds up. And if this upper, being just over $200, will perform, uh, you know, it's a game changer. It really is, especially for the average budget patriot. And uh, as a little add-in here, if you're watching this and you are a Christian, and you do not have a rifle, but you are wearing clothes right now, you are wrong, especially as a male. So uh, if you can 
get yourself an AR-15, and if any of my subscribers ever want any advice, ask me. I've got a lot of military experience. I've got a lot of private experience. I know a lot about a lot of these different brands, uh, and I will soon be be have a, a, a Armalite armor brochure. I'm going to get really good at this, and I want to help the people who need it the most. So. Feel free to ask me anything in the comments section below. I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff, but you'll be seeing this rifle a lot in the future. And I will also I also plan on getting two more uppers, 16 inch GI, putting the same handguard on them, and whatever rear sight I go with, the same rear sight. And we're gonna find out which one shoots the best for the money. Same optic on all of them, so that I can help you guys. We're gonna find the problems, we're gonna find the best budget option, and let's get America armed because people want to take your guns. And when people want to take your guns, that's when you need to uh, get some training, get some ammo, and make sure you have your guns. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I hope that you have a blessed day. And, uh, man, I really look forward to talking to you.